Hey everyone, it's Craig the Information Lab here and this is video four in the series I'm doing based on last week's Devs on Stage at Tableau conference in Las Vegas. And this video is going to be on the new Tableau data model. Uh, this is a great one for you to have a watch because you can then go and have a play yourself. If you go to prerelease.tableau.com, um, sign up for a pre-release account and you can download this version of Tableau Desktop that I'm about to use and play with the new data model and give them lots of feedback. Um, the data model is, or the new data model is essentially, it's a fundamental shift away from how we're used to connecting to databases uh, using left, right, outer joins, and instead just telling Tableau, well, what data do you want to be in the model? Which tables do you want to use? Tableau will connect them up for you, and then it'll figure out how to do a left join or how to do a right join based on the, uh, the visualization that you're putting together. So let's have a really quick look. Now for this, um, trying to find like an example data set, which is a good mix of different levels of data, sort of high level data, more dimensional data, and then sort of more uh, line level uh, fact table data uh, that I'm happy to show. Uh, and so, you know, it's not sort of internal data, it's actually pretty difficult. So I think for the first time ever, I'm gonna use Microsoft AdventureWorks data warehouse. Um, so down the left here, see I've already made the connection to it in SQL Server. Uh, and we have a bunch of fact tables and a bunch of dimension tables. And I'm gonna go straight for this internet sales table. So, you know, this is gonna be a table of probably line level data of every single sale that's gone through this fictional company's website. Um, I can then see up top here, I've then got some dimensions that I might want to put into this. So um, let's start with product. And oh, there's some stuff relating to products, so categories and subcategories. Um, let's try this one here. We can go to subcategory and then we can also go to category. Now, what you might have seen on stage for Devs on Stage, and also you can see right here is you know, this table, this preview table down here, we're used to it building and, and getting wider, um, or if I sort of show a list of fields, much longer, and every single table just adds more and more fields to it. But this is just the list of fields in that one table and the one table that I click. And 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 so, you know, it's it's already sort of alluding to us that it's not actually building one big giant table for us to query. It's just telling us what's you know what we're adding to our data model. So let's explore this and see what happens. So we'll go into the sheet here, and we can see that immediately there's not just a, a change in how Tableau connects to data, but it also has changed subtly how it lists the dimensions and measures. Um, you know we're used to this this split halfway uh, down the pane here of dimensions at the top and measures at the bottom. And all the tables kind of mixed in together into those two categories, but they're not anymore. They're now listed uh, by table first and then broken down into dimensions and measures. This little line in between. One of the things I really love about the new UI is if I drag it up, see it only shows dimensions and measures at the point I'm dragging, because it's really the only time um, I, I care when I might be want to move these around. And I just sort of instinctively know eventually that dimensions at the top and measures that are at the bottom. So let's just sort of break, uh, collapse these and we'll have a look at product and let's see. So one of the first things you hear about the new um, data model is that it doesn't explode out the data, right? So one of the things that we're constantly uh, aware of when we connect different tables together is whether they uh, have lots of records in them and we're gonna do a one-to-many join. So if we're gonna join uh, one row in one table to many rows in another table, we get those many rows, but then for every single row in that uh, many table, it duplicates in the, the those single rows. So if we're gonna start counting things um, or we're gonna start averaging things, we know we have to be really careful because how the, the, the data table is built up can determine those results. Well, with a new data model, it's all uh, computed at the point at which you drag and drop. So uh, a great way to see this is 
with uh, a count. So if we just put on here count of product, we'll see there are uh, 606 products in uh, individual products in the database. Now, that would mean in a regular um, connection in Tableau today that there would be 606 internet sales, which seems kind of low. Um, the only way we could sort of do a count of product is to do a count distinct of like product ID. But like I say, this is all determined at the point of uh, you dragging and dropping. So although there may be 606 products, there's 60,000 internet sales. So, you know, immediately we're seeing this new data model in action of not having to distinguish between uh, count distinct or average or any of those sort of workarounds that, that we um, instinctively use in Tableau. So I can say go um, uh, and start analyzing this now. Let's have a look. Let's start with, um, let's say, product category. And I wonder how many product categories there are. There are four. Okay, so let's have a look at the English category name. We've got accessories, bikes, clothing, and components. All right, now I wonder how many products are in every single category. So let's drag out the count of product and put it on here. And, and something noticed straight away is we no longer have four product categories. We have five because we have this null. Um, now that null wasn't in there when category name was dragged out because of the way Tableau did the connection. It just got the four product category names. But when it went to connect in the product table, when I dragged out count of product, it said, well, there are some products that don't have a category. So I'm going to tell you about them. And there are 209 of them. So immediately we switched from just like a single table connection to a left join based on the number of products. So products on the left and then product categories on the right. So and then in a left join, we'd get um, all of the products and the categories that match and the nulls that, that are in the product table. So you know, we're, we're seeing that there's maybe problems with the data straight away. We didn't really quite realize. Um, I can then go a bit further and also can grab subcategory and watch the, the numbers here. So um, if I grab subcategory, oh, no, I don't want the count. I want the name. And actually, let's put it on color just to check those amounts. And, and yeah, so everything's stayed the same. There was about 210 or 209 nulls and about 190 components and, and various other amounts. Um, let's go to the nulls. I'm not too fussed about doing data cleansing right now. I'm going to put that on rows and let's just make it a bit more colorful. And a nice little trick that I don't know if anyone's um, spotted in latest releases of Tableau, you can do nested sorting super easy. There we go. So um, we have our product categories, our product subcategories. We have how many products are in each category. But I want to know now not just how many products are in each category, but how many sales. So let's go grab this count of internet sales and put it on columns. And oh, well, first of all, there's you know that way Tableau is connected up the tables. As we saw before, we have this differentiation now. We're not using count distincts, but Tableau knows to count at the product level in the left half of the chart and to count at the sales level in the right half of the chart. So we get 17,000 for, for tires and tubes and 11 products. What we also find is that apparently there are no component sales. So Having not really played with this data set before, um, I've made a discovery that apparently this company doesn't sell components on the web through their internet site. So I wonder if there is another sales table that we could use. So let's go back to the data source. And if we have a look in the fact tables, we'll see there is this reseller sales. So I wonder if we only sell components through resellers. Well. This data model doesn't just do these sort of linear connections. It also allows us to do unions. 
So we put that together. We find that this comes into now made a, a, a block made of two separate tables. We can double click it and see what it's made up of. Okay, and we can edit the union. So this is basically like Tableau today in the connection. Um, and then all this extra fun stuff is, is the new data model in place. We have like this old data model, um, which can be form a part of the new data model. Now, if we go back to the sheet, there we go. We're not only, we've made up some gaps in other sales, but also all our component sales have come in as well. So, you know, this is, uh, I mean, this is fascinating to me. This is so much easier than having to think about every single thing ahead of time. So, you know, when you make that connection, you are, you, you're trying to do the best for your user base. I would, I would say probably what you're actually doing is doing the best for you when you're doing your analysis. You know, when you're first going to make those connections and you're first going to analyze the data, or you've got questions in your mind about where you're going to go with it. And you could create something awesome. You can create something absolutely fantastic. And you think, right, this is a really clean, really great data source, and you're going to publish it. And then you share it. And as people use it, they're getting further and further from those initial decisions that you made. You know, why did you connect that to that? When you connect these two tables together, you know that you have to do count distincts, you have to do averages, but the person at the other end doesn't know that. They don't know those things that were in your mind when, uh, and those assumptions that you made when you did the connection. So they could start doing analysis and you know come out with crazy figures because they just didn't realize that they should be doing a count distinct. Um, whereas this new data model is, it, it just blows all that away. And it so far seems really super easy. It's, um, it, there's no sort of, uh, no lag at the moment, it seems, although this, this data set was pretty low in, in you know, it trying to figure out how to do the connection as it's, as I'm working with the data. Um, the only thing that I'm unsure of right now is how I would take the data model at any given time back to a, um, a SQL admin. So let's say I've done a visualization, I get a figure out, my colleague says, that's wrong. And I said, well, Tableau's telling me this, this is, this is what the number is. And, you know, we have a, a an argument We we they think it should be this. I say, well, it, it's, it's telling me it's that. Now, at some point I've got to take the code that's been written, that, that's been executed against the database. And I've got to take it to someone and say, right, tell me, is this right? Was this connection right? Was this query correct? Am I right? Or are they right? And at the moment, I don't see how to do that. Um, I'm going to try and dig in a little bit more to, to see if there's a way to extract that out without sort of going back to the, the database and looking through the query logs and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I think it, it, if we can get to a point where at any, any point in the analysis, we can pull out the SQL that's been executed and, and send it to someone to check and to verify. You know, this, this is just an absolute game changer and it's, I don't think we're gonna look back. We're gonna see sort of left and right joins as a bit of a, a thing of the past in the world of Tableau. Um, so yeah, I'm really super excited about this. Um, it's probably the thing that's got me most interested so far in the four videos that we've done. Um, and I hope to see you again on the next one.